No. It's because you had it zoomed wrong. It's because you had it zoomed wrong. Well, we're downtown Hannibal at the Trolley Tour Depot. And yay, they have free parking. It's a touristy looking town. Ought to be fun to walk around here. Okay, we almost get started and Lincoln has to go back to the truck. Did he lock it? Did you lock it? Huh? I got it. <laughs> Mark Twain and Huckleberry Finn Monument located at the base where the stairs start to take you up to the Mark Twain Memorial Lighthouse which we will do later. We don't have time to do it right now because in a few minutes we get on the trolley. Here's the Mark Twain Boyhood Home. Tour starts here. So, I've been through this before at Johnny Cash's Boyhood Home. That will not be Mark Twain's Boyhood Home. The tour starts here and the home could be 10 miles down a dirt road somewhere. But we'll come back and check this out right after the trolley tour. Here's a memorial garden right next to the Welcome Center. And you can film it after I start it. Come on, Lincoln, start that fire. You can film the camper. I can film the camper? Yeah, well, I do this. Well, what about if I film you starting the fire? If I cut the camera off, will you start the fire? Yes, you gotta shut it and put it on the table. Alright, no, put that 
I'm not going to put it down. I want to see that start. You don't have to be in it. I just want to see that start. How am I not going to be in it? Well, I, I don't know. Just turn your butt. Nobody will recognize your butt. Cup tea. You can do it right after. Come on, Link. Let's see what you've done. Those little sticks aren't getting on fire. Well, that, that dry wood is, though. I see it burning. Really? Good job, Lincoln. Stop. You want to stop up too? Hey, that sounded like wood popping there. Lincoln, get your hands out of that woods. Oh, sure. Lincoln, you got a good fire started. Go up there and take credit. I think I'll pass. Let me get your picture. No. I'll take it where you're sitting. No, up sitting's better. You think it would have worked if you hadn't had that hat on? Nope. That looks like a fireman's hat. American fireman's hat. Yeah. <laughs> hey, look at that fire go, man. Got a good fire going thanks to Lincoln being able to blow on it and make it blaze up. You did it too. I didn't blow on it. You got it going. That deer's still up in the woods. Mm -hmm. That was my chance. Put the stick of fire on it so I didn't want to throw it. Is he on the track? This may go into the blooper section, but we're still at Ray Baran's campground in Hannibal. And one thing for sure that I need to put on the blooper page would be the fact that we couldn't get the camper level and as a result the refrigerator quit working and as a result we had to throw away tons of food so there's an RV store close to Hannibal we drove down there about blocks to lift the put the back wheels up on. So the back wheels are up on four blocks. 
and that let me get it almost level. And after an overnight, the, refriger the refrigerator started working again. So I hope it's still working. Mom sure I thought a while ago that it wasn't working. Overnight I had it on propane and I put it on electric this morning and she thought it wasn't working. I put it back on propane. So we'll find out if it's working. I'm not sure. I know that when we leave here and the camper starts shaking the, the refrigerator around in it, it's going to be working fine. I have thought about stopping and buying another set of blocks so I could raise the back end up to five inches instead of four. Okay, so that's one thing we had to deal with. Now, you guys remind me of another thing. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, Lincoln comes screaming out the door. I didn't, what? In a panic. Papa D, Papa D. He had found a mouse. I didn't do that. I said, Papa D. <laughs> oh, it's filming. Wait a minute, I'm skipping something. How do we know we had a mouse? I'm sure I found it. Now, what made you put all those rat trap things down? Because I saw one yesterday. Okay, Mama saw a mouse the other day when she was here by herself. Mama I didn't Sarah. scream. So we went to Walmart and we bought 60, 60 of those flat, sticky uh, mouse pads. She put them all around the floor and told us not to step on them. I don't know if you've ever stepped on them, but... I got my chihuahua hook in, hooked in one one time and not, they never got the poor thing off. They don't let go when they get them, so they'll catch a mouse. So she put those on around the camper and then we went to bed and got up the next morning. We didn't hear any noise during the night, so we didn't think we'd caught one. We thought if we caught it, we'd, we'd hear it squealing or something. So that's when I was sitting outside and Lincoln comes flying out the door, airborne, Papa D, Papa D. I didn't do that. I said, Mama Cheryl says, come here. And he had found a mouse. Papa Deep, Mama Cheryl found a nap. Under the bed that he sleeps on. Well, no, it's in the but... living room. It was a let out couch. And there was a mouse on one of those pads under it. So I raised the couch. Checked to see if it was dead. It wasn't dead. Its legs were moving, but it was stuck. We found, a, in another corner of the room, we found a pad that had hair all over it. We think he had gotten stuck on another one, and he ate his way off of it. He chewed on that mouse pad until he got loose. And then when he got under the bed, he got caught again and couldn't get out. So we took him out. So that's our rat story. What's another thing you need to tell about? Cut it off while we think. Yes, sir. So, you always meet some interesting people when you go camping, if you're there for long enough to get to know anybody. Well, we, there's a man and woman here. They're both retired. But they spend a lot of time just traveling. They've got some interesting stories. He was telling me one this morning. It, for some reason, Interstate 24 just popped up in our conversation. I think I was telling where Mount Eagle was on 24 between Chattanooga and Nashville. Well, 24 rang a bell with him because at one time in his life, he and his wife were pulling one of those, they were driving a Jeep, some kind of a Jeep, and they were pulling one of those real small campers like rounded like teardrop teardrop type campers but this is one that they had this was a u-haul camper back when u-haul used to make those little things and they had bought it when u-haul got out of that business and somehow all those campers got donated to somebody that put them on ebay well he bought one on ebay and he he's good with carpentry and he he fixed it up they, he fixed it up to the point that they really loved it. Well, they were driving on Interstate 
24, I think he said near Paducah. And all of a sudden, somebody rammed him from the back end. And when they did, he happened to be going over an overpass, so there was an expressway under him, and he was going over that expressway on what you call an overpass. Lost control of the vehicle, ran off the road, and his, his Jeep and that camper started rolling and rolling and rolling down the hill. But when they came to, well, I mean, when they stopped rolling, they never were unconscious when they stopped rolling. All the, all the glass and everything was broken and all the windshields and the windows were broke out. And his wife was hanging, she was suspended from in a seat belt above him and he was sort of laying down on the bottom. And she, neither one was unconscious, so she reached down and she touched his face and said, David, you're bleeding, you've got blood all over your face. Well, it turned out he wasn't bleeding, it was her blood. She was the only one that got hurt. She got a broke nose and glass all in her face and in her hands. They had a little dog with them that didn't get hurt. The, uh, they heard people coming to their rescue and pretty soon TV cameras and all kind of local news people were there filming it. And, uh, they ended up being taken to the hospital and the dog got taken to the vet and, and they were all right. But the mysterious part about it, now this was near Paducah on Interstate 24. The mysterious part about it is that they couldn't get any information on who had hit them. They, uh, they looked for the, they did get in touch with one of the eyewitnesses, and the eyewitnesses wouldn't tell them anything. He told them that he wasn't allowed to talk about it. So we don't know what was going on. They don't know what was going on. It, it's almost like somebody was in the witness protection program and was being protected from being exposed by the news media. They never did find out anything about it. But they ended up, uh, I mean, they were all right. And their insurance company finally sent her a check for $25,000 to cover the whatever, on, where she got glass in her face. I don't know what you call that. They paid her hospital bills, but they also gave her a check for $25,000. And so they used that money to upgrade to a, a bigger, better camper. And they're still going at it. Oh yeah, I forgot about the money. When the uh, rescue people, they had to hook a chain to the truck. That's the first thing they did so that it wouldn't roll on down the hill. They thought it was in danger of rolling on down the hill. So they got a chain hooked to it and they they pulled the truck up and they, they got him out, but they had to cut the top of the Jeep off to get her out. Anyway, when they got them both out and were fixing to take them to the hospital, the man's name is Dave. Dave told them, said, I've got to go back down to the truck and get my money. He said, I've got, I've got $3,000 in a drawer in that camper for the trip and I need to go get that money. Well, they wouldn't let him go back down there. The man said, I'll, I'll go down and look for it for you. So they went on to the hospital and, oh yeah, the man said, well, if you find the money, get me that revolver that's right below it. <laughs> so anyway, he went on to the hospital. And after a while, this guy showed up. I think he was like a, I don't know if he was a detective, but anyway, he was a, an emergency type person. He came in, he said, well, I found your money. And he had a towel wrapped around the revolver. He had found the revolver, revolver too. He said, I found everything you were looking for, but don't say a word about it. Just when you when you leave, take this with you and don't say anything, and I won't say anything. He told him if the police got their hands on this, you'd never get it back because of all the red tape involved. So that's the way that ended. And then before they left town, they went by the, the uh, wrecker yard to see the scrap and he said it was just they had brought all the junk back and put it in a pile 
they cleaned the road off and brought all the pieces back and just piled them up. So it was just a pile of junk. Where he he told the wrecker man that that he had uh, another four hundred dollars hidden under something, some part of the floor he was able to hide money under. So he uh, told him what to look for, and the record man went and found that four hundred dollars. It was where he said it was. So anyway, they, it's real interesting to hear them tell that story, and let me tell you, they got a lot more just like it. Okay. Flashlight, Poppy. Oh, uh, you hold the flashlight on it. Yeah, I'll be too shaky. So we had a mouse in the camper. Mm. And uh, Cheryl put out these sticky pads all around the camper, and so all three of us have stepped in them. But anyway, overnight we thought, well, he's gone. We didn't we didn't catch a mouse. He got out the same way he came in. Lincoln found the mouse. Yeah. It's under his bed. <laughs> Lincoln, how are we going to get to it? Do I have to lift the bed or what? I ain't getting to it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, how do I get to it? Do I have to lift the bed? And you will have to get off the bed. Oh. What made you look under there? <laughs> he didn't even get close to the candy. Oh, what's in the trap? Candy? Red Starburst. What? Red Starburst. Fresh Starburst. Okay, well that'll work. Here you go, Lincoln. Okay, let's get Lincoln's mouse. His friend that came to see him. Ah! Is he dead? He didn't even get the starburst. He moved the trap, though. He moved the cat. Oh, he's alive. He's moving. Oh, no! <laughs> and he did. There is some Starburst over there. He's got the garbage with it. Yeah, I will. That's really enough. Swimming at Mark Twain Lake. Pretty lake. Water is cold in spots and really warm in spots. Just depends on where you're standing. But anyway, it was nice. We really enjoyed it. I don't know how big a lake this is, but it's got a, st a lot of stuff on it, like a swimming area and there's a lot of boats on the lake. They don't seem to be fishing boats, they seem to be pleasure boats. Yep. See, 
here's the dam, and that's what they call the spillway, right below the dam. I bet there's a boat ramp down here, because there comes a boat. Mark Twain Lake Dam. This is the spillway below the dam. Restricted, no boats from here to the dam. When the horn blows, watch out for rapidly rising water levels. But you can fish right in here. I saw one boat leave. Don't see anybody fishing here, but you can. Could you fish here? Yeah. You know, we saw that one boat leaving, but I don't see the boat ramp. We'll ride on down the road and see if we find it. Ha <laughs> ha! 